Uh, welcome everyone to this uh, course in interactive theorem improving. And so I'm David Broman. I'm a professor at KDH. I'm giving this course together with Elias, who will introduce himself a little bit later on, who's an assistant professor at Uppsala University. And we got people here from uh, various uh, universities, both from uh, KTH, uh, from Stanford and, and from Uppsala who's going to take this course, uh, either if you're taking it for credits or if you're taking it uh, just for fun or taking parts of it and checking in some lectures for fun. All right, so just a few things about theorem provers or proof assistants or interactive theorem provers as they are often called. Why are we interested in this? Probably since you're here, you are already interested in some, some way. I mean, why do we do this? Well. To write hand math, you know, mathematical proofs by hand is, is very important. It can be tedious to write, but it can be very tedious to, to actually check the proofs afterwards. So a proof assistant can kind of assist. That's why it's called proof assistant. And especially checking can be almost trivial, basically running the prover afterwards to check someone else's proof. So that is really, really great. But as you will see, it's not always that trivial to learn. It can be a steep learning curve to learn to use these kind of tools. And uh, that's why you're here, taking your course. How are they used then? I mean, they can be used in many ways to prove uh, like general mathematical theorems. It can be used for formalizing and proving semantics of programming languages to be used as proving actually the software itself that is correct. For example, verified compilers is on like CakeML or Compsat. There are many different kinds of proof assistants. Uh, I mean, these are just uh, to mention a few, like Koch, Isabel, Hall, Agda, Lean, and so forth. And we will focus on Koch in this in this course. I mean, Koch is used a lot in, in programming language theory, and, and this is also the focus of this course. But all of them have seen, you know, are great, and there are some, of course, as always, pros and cons. And we will therefore also have a few guest lectures giving you know introductions to some of the other tools, which I think will be really fun. The first part of this lecture today is, is kind of a course information. More, this is especially for those of you taking it for credits, this is important. What, what is the course about? Examination, activities, and so forth. And then after that, uh, Elias will take over and start with the introduction of, of the Koch theorem prover. All right, so part one. First of all, I'm trying to collect all the information always on this page, so you should have receive this uh, this link. So it, there should always be the latest information. So we're publishing, you know, links to, to videos and, and to slides and so on on this page. The learning objectives of this course, foundation to learn proofs and constructing proofs in Coq for basic logic and to apply a proof tactics that helps you to automate some proofs. Then the focus will also be on Coq related to programming language semantics. That is the second part how to prove properties when you're constructing proofs for PL. And then uh, to dive in and be able to explain uh, dependent types. And then also to look at different kind of theorem provers and how they relate. And finally, we'll have some uh, discussion section and also some written assignments about ethics and mathematics, especially in computer science and what it means to actually prove something and when, when can you do that when you're publishing paper and what's the justification and so forth. The lectures uh, are as follows. I will, I'm the examiner of this course and I'm kind of organizing this, you know, lead the discussions about the ethical part, but I'm not going to teach so much uh, on the actual provers. Instead, uh, Elias is now as is the professor at Uppsala and will do that. Uh, he was a postdoc in my, in my group before, which was really great. Uh, but now he's in Uppsala and he's a real expert on, on uh, using uh, the Koch theorem prover. I also have arranged now two uh, guest lectures so far. Uh, so one will be on Agda. It will be taught by Jeremy Sik uh, from Indiana University. He is an ex expert on, on, uh, on theorem provers in general. I actually, uh, as a grad student, I learned to use Isabel Isar uh, while being there. He was at Boulder at that time and I learned it from him. He is really good, but he's now moved over to and using more and more Agda. So he will be introducing Agda to us. And then we have the second uh, guest lecture. 
Magnus Murian from Chalmers. He is using Hall and he has been uh, working. He's one of the key uh, you know, designers and developers of CakeML, the verified compiler, where you, it's a verified compiler for functional languages down to machine code. So that I think will also be really great. And potentially I, I will invite some, some more guest lectures. And if you have some suggestions, please let me know by just dropping an email. So the schedule, I mean, it will be a little bit updated uh, over time. So please check the website for the latest part. But we are here right now. We are giving this lecture. And, and as you can see, it's it's not a perfect timing for anyone. Uh, maybe someone on the, say, uh, uh, East Coast in the US. But otherwise, it's it's kind of late in Stockholm and very early in, in California. So I try to have something that actually works in, in, in both time zones. The first lecture today, and we'll go on until 10.30 uh, or 9, uh, 7.30, and we'll have some breaks in between. The next uh, lecture uh, that comes in a few weeks, we will talk about logical foundations again, uh, focusing on COG. And after that, we'll have two more lectures on, on COG, and that is when we're moving over to proving things on programming languages and semantics. The final uh, lecture which will or seminar will be in the end in June, uh, where we'll have presentations by students where they will present different aspects, uh, uh, you know, reflections on different theorem proofs, but also show some of their most interesting proofs that they've done during the course. And uh, then we'll have these two uh, guest lectures and the exact dates for this will be decided later on. I will post it to Slack. Home assignments. So this is the kind of the bulk of the work, and we are using a, a really nice book, uh, which is online by Benjamin Pierce. Basically, you are writing your proofs inline. So the book and the proof script is the same, and you kind of fill in the blanks. You, there are theorems, and you're going to write the proofs for them directly in the book. And that's what you're going to submit also in the end uh, as an examination. So the first part here, you have the links here. So you will see this picture. It's not possible to read it, and that's the that's okay. Uh, you, you can find it online here uh, with this link. But I have highlighted the parts that are included, so you will be able to match and see which parts you should do. You will do all the standard exercises here, all of them, non-optional, non-advanced. And then you have some optional things. So there are optional exercises, and you should do at least 10 of them. Uh, but you can select yourself which of them you select to do as long as it's 10 or more. And then there are also a, a bunch of advanced exercises and you should do at least four, but you select yourself which ones. All right, and then the, the second part, it's uh, volume two, and that is focusing on programming language semantic foundations. And um, it's the same kind of structure. You have the link to this and you can see which parts that is, are included. You should do the same thing, basically. Do all the standard ones, and then at least 10 optional and four advanced. So this is the part of the home assignments. And uh, then we have the refle reflected report. And you should submit this uh, two days before the seminar. I will post exactly the dates and the guidelines how to submit it later on. Pretty short report, three to five pages. And it should include the following things. You should discuss dependent types. So you learned about dependent types during the course. Uh, you should reflect on it and think about how it, it you know, affects uh, your way of proving or how it affects the use in different theorem proofs. Uh, you should then discuss different pr proof assistants, at least three of them. And uh, you will be kind of exposed in guest lectures and in the main course, at least three. But you can also select other and uh, others and compare and discuss. And then uh, you should also discuss this about ethical aspects. And you'll get some reading, you know, reading materials before that as well. It's important, of course, code of honor. So this is, uh, I don't recognize this. It, this is not Sweden. Uh, I think it's the Swiss Guards uh, of the Vatican. You can see the link here to KTH's uh, code of honor. Uh, take a look at that. In general, you're uh, definitely allowed to discuss, you know, your solutions and how to solve things with others. I mean, we're here to learn, but what you're not allowed to do is try to find the solutions uh, and copy them from internet. Because of course, there are solutions to these exercises on the net, but you're not allowed to even, you know, take a look at them. You should really try to solve them on your own or discuss with others. In the report, of course, you're not allowed to copy any text unless it's quoted correctly. 
and you're not allowed to use any AI tool for generating text in, in your reports. But it's, of course, okay to use uh, you know, like Grammarly and other kind of tools to be able to fix your spelling or grammar. The examination. So to pass the course, there are basically three parts to solve all the talk exercises in uh, volume one and volume two that I talked about before. That's, this is the main bulk of the examination and the workload. You should write this uh, report that I discussed previously. And then to make an oral presentation. There is an oral presentation in the final exam. So if you're taking this course for credits, you should submit, be there and give a presentation. Attending the lectures and seminars, that is actually optional, but it's highly recommended. Uh, we are recording it so, so that you can view it afterwards. But if you can come uh, on time, even if it's early in the morning uh, for some of you or late in the evening uh, for some of you, I think that would be great because it's always good to do things directly and uh, then you also have a chance to interact and ask questions and so forth. Finally, we have the course registration. So please go there and register regardless if you take the course for credits or not. And, and this is very useful for us to just know who is actually you know, interested in the course. I mean, there is no obligation if you register, so you can you know, drop out if you, if you find it boring after some time. But um, please register. And, and we will also use that, that the email that you provide there, we will use that email to invite you to a Slack channel so that we can uh, you know, post information. This tech channel, I, I'm going to use the miking Slack channel with the team. This is a, a research product that we have in our group, but we will have then two channels dedicated for this course. Uh, and that would be this one, so ITP course discussions. So here you can basically discuss any kind of topics, uh, questions and so forth within, you know, about interactive theorem provers uh, in general, or particularly, of course, uh, about this course. And then I also created a separate channel where we'll use more for, you know, posting kind of general information uh, about deadlines and so forth. So that's the main kind of content of the course. So then let's go over to questions and answers about the course. So here is the point where I will actually stop the video and uh, I will not include this part uh, in the public lecture.